All right, good morning. I'm Aaron Heiser, Maker's Leather Supply, and this is the Lewis and Clark um, uh, Explorer's Backpack. Um, this is the third video in the series, but the second one where we're actually building stuff. So, anyway, part three. Um, in the last video, we move the camera down here. I'm working on a different table today. I'm seeing seeing how this might work out. A little bit of zoom action here. Yeah. All right. Um, so in the last uh, episode, we um, we went ahead and did the flaps, where we rolled the the front around the back. Now, if you don't want to do all that, you don't have a skyver or whatever, that's fine. You can actually just butt the butt the liner up to it and sew around, and there you go. Um, I would take about a quarter of an inch off each side though um, to do that, where it goes down into. The, the bag in the back to make sure it fits, okay? Because this is definitely cut oversized so that you can um, roll your edges, okay? Same thing on this little flap right here. This was the pocket flap um, that I did not do on camera, but it was done the exact same way. Um, there you go. So what we're going to do next is the pocket itself, okay? So there's that front pocket piece. I did a little bit of gouging on the back of it, if you remember. Um, we are going to sew these corners together, okay? Very simple little operation. I'm going to fold them, pinch them down like this, and I'm going to sew about an eighth of an inch in, and I'm only going to sew down to the last, like, quarter of an inch, okay? Like, right there. Because what's going to happen is when this goes down onto the bag, that's going to be flattened out like that, and that's how it'll be sewn to the bag, okay? So... I'm going to sew it right here down to I'm going to leave a quarter of an inch from the edge and I'm going to do the exact same thing right here okay so just the bottom two corners and then we can lay it out flat on our bag and um, and, and mark and measure it um, I'll explain all that in a minute but I'm going to have to do mine a little different than I would normally do it just because I can't get the double-sided tape to stick to this leather so, um, I'm going to go sew those two little corners right quick, and then I'll start to talk to you about placement of the pocket. Alright, so I got, um, got that moved, or got that corner sewn in. Let me move this a little bit here. Alright, got that corner sewn in, okay? Corner right there, corner right there. And then what I also did is I just went and bent... The last quarter of an inch back a little bit. Let me try to stay on camera since I zoomed it in there. Okay, and I'm going to do that on all three sides. Because that's what's going to lay flat against the bag uh, body and sew in. Okay. Now, once I go to place this on the bag itself, like I said, it's going to be a little bit trickier for me because I'm using a, uh, a leather that the double-sided tape doesn't want to stick to. But I'm going to explain to you how um, it can be much easier, and uh, then I'll have, show you how I'm having to do it. That way, just in case you choose a leather like this, maybe, maybe it can help you. Um, generally, what I would do is sew all three of these sides down together. Okay, I would double-sided tape it. I would, um, let's do some measuring here so I can give you some accurate information. Uh, let me do, 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 do. Nine and, let's say nine and a quarter inches is going to be our, our goal here. Let's make sure that that matches. Yeah. Um, nine and a quarter inches would be where the outsides of these, um, the, the length of all that, uh, once the pocket lays down, okay? So it would be nine and a quarter inches all the way across the top from tip to tip, okay? So we got to measure our bag front here. It is 12 inches, all right? So the difference would be, what, two and three quarters of an inch, right? So we need to split that difference to find the middle for where to, to, to sew this in, okay? Now, 
The other measurement would be from the bottom of the bag, I'm gonna do two inches, just to keep it easy, okay? Now, my little trick for all this is going to be that I'm going to find the center of the bottom of all this, all right? Um, the center of the, the that uh, flattened area there on the bottom is gonna be, let's see, it's eight and a half inches. So what, four and a quarter, right? I'm gonna find my four and a quarter and I'm gonna mark it with my scratch all right quick and just put a little line. Okay, so I'm just putting a little bitty mark right there at the bottom of that, four and a quarter. Now, I'm gonna use my centering ruler here Bag body's 12 inches, so there's my, my center. I want it two inches from the bottom of the bag, okay? Which is very convenient because this is a two inch wide ruler. So, I'm going to mark up, or uh, line up the zero on the ruler with that little mark I made on the pocket there, and boom, there's the placement for the bottom part of my pocket. If you're using double-sided tape, you can place that down first and then just kind of curl under your edges and make sure your even distance is from the sides and then stick them down too. I, since I can't stick mine down with tape, I'm going to scribe a line where the bottom of that bag is going to be, or the bottom of that pocket, I apologize. Okay, right there. And I'm going to basically, I'm going to clip my ruler to my leather, and then uh, as I sew, I'm going to keep that, that line right where it needs to be, and I'm going to stitch that bottom part on there, and then I'll come back and stitch up my sides. If you've got it all stuck together with double-sided tape, you can just start right here, sew down, make that corner, sew down, make that corner, and sew back up, and you're done. Okay? I don't have that luxury. so. I'm going to clip my ruler to my leather, hold this up against it while I sew, cuss a few times, and um, get that bottom part on there. Once I get the bottom part on there, the sides will be a little bit easier because now the whole thing's not trying to move on me, okay? Um, but I am first, I'm going to attempt to double-sided tape it just to kind of help hold it in place, even though I'm sure it won't work too well. So, I'll be right back. I'm going to put some tape along the bottom part of this, and I'll be right back. Okay, so here I have clipped my ruler on, okay, um, and I centered it. Now I'm going to find my center marking and press down where I've got my little bit of tape there. And then I'm just going to flatten out that bottom part of the pocket and stick it to it, I hope. <laughs> Nice and tricky. I promise this works a lot better with a, a leather that you can use the tape, but I really wanted to use this leather. So this is the price I pay. And I'm sorry that I'm doing it on video <laughs> that you're having to watch. But I feel like it's okay if you realize that I struggle too. We all struggle. All right, I think what I'll do is take this other ruler and kind of press in from the outside to get that. I want it flat right up against this ruler and I'm having a hard time doing that because it just wants to buckle under for me. Okay, there we go. Got that line nice and flat. Now all I'm gonna sew is that line right there. Okay, gonna go over to the sewing machine, I'm gonna sew that one line right there. When I come back, I'll line up the sides and then sew them. Um, yeah, and just as a reminder, if you're, you're able to stick the whole thing down, then just stick all three sides down using this same method, you know, putting rulers as your guides and keeping your edges straight, and then just sew it all at once. All right, folks, got it sewn on there. Um, 
I did not record it because I knew that I would say some choice words and things like that, and I don't want y'all to think I'm not the wholesome individual that you think I am. Um, anyway, but I probably should have recorded it for, you know, like a bloopers reel or something because it was definitely interesting and fun. So, got it sewn. That's, that's the main point here. All right, so now I'm going to line up my sides. I'm going to do it the exact same way. I'm going to do it one side at a time because honestly it's it's kind of fruitless to try to line up both sides get over there and while i'm so on one side the other side gets moved and you know danged if you do danged if you don't um so i'm gonna do the exact same thing though it uh it did work out um i'm sure with a lot of practice it would work out even better and more but it did work out um i'm not going to i'm gonna try on this first one though i'm not going to tape it. I honestly think it could have been okay without taping it. All right. Um, but I'm going to clip my ruler on there. We'll just run it up against the side of it and then sew it down. All right. Um, and I will take the camera over there for this one because again, I want to show you how I'm sewing it. Um, and everything now that I kind of have a, a little something involved and I won't have to, uh, you know, scream and cuss and, and embarrass myself in front of you fine folks. So, uh, when I come back, I'll be at the sewing machine with this one right here, and then at the sewing machine, I'm going to line up the other side and go ahead and sew it down. There's no reason to walk back and forth and, and all that, um, when I could just do it there. Alright, got my ruler clipped in place here, and got my uh, pocket leaning up against the ruler. Let's see how this works out. 20 something years of doing this and I still experiment daily. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just start at the top of the pocket here. I'll do me a couple of back stitches and then run down to the bottom of it. Back stitch again. So far, every, I mean, it's lined up perfectly. It's leaning on the ruler like it should. Uh, hopefully this is gonna work out. <laughs> Um, this is a Cobra Class 18 from Leather Machine Company. I'm using size 138 thread. I don't recall if I had uh, talked about that before. Um, a hand sewing equivalent of this thread would be a size 138. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, that's the machine thread. Uh, size 0.8 millimeter or uh, 0 0.030 if you're using a uh, Made in America thread. <laughs> Um, I think Main Thread Company is the only ones making a thread that, you know, would be comparable like that. Alright, got to the bottom, did a little back stitch in action, there we go. So I'm going to pull it out of the machine here, and clippity clip. And I'll show you what that bottom corner looks like now that there's two pieces sewn in. So that you can see, you know, in case you're having a hard time visualizing what this will look like. Okay, so there's that corner right there. It's just an open space as far as this flap and that flap go. Um, but again, you know, that would be one solid stitch line if you just stuck the whole thing down at once and, and went around it. Okay, um, so yeah, now I'm going to do the other side the exact same way over here. Oops, sorry, zoomed in too much. Over here. Um, and when I come back, we will, uh, we'll have the flap with us and we're going to go ahead and sew the flap on. Alrighty. Okay. So now that we have our pocket securely sewn on, um, clip these extra strings here. They're just going to annoy the hell out of me. Um, we need to do the little pocket flap. Okay. So it just, uh, tucks just inside the pocket a little bit. And then we just sew along the base of it there, okay? Making sure, of course, that we have it on straight and everything. Um, if you lined it like mine, you're gonna wanna pre-roll it a little bit um, just to help it have some flexibility uh, because it is kind of thick and heavy. Um, and then there's what we'll end up with, is just like that, okay? Now, there is going to be the little closure clasp on it Okay, you can attempt to put that on before you sew this down, and it honestly would be a little bit easier to apply this thing. 
but I don't find it that difficult to, to, to put this in afterward. And then I feel like I have a more accurate, you know, like I want this to be kind of snug and tight and conveniently um, able to open with one hand and close with one hand, as opposed to if you have to pull it really hard or push it back up, you know, if you, if you don't have the, the spacing and everything right. So I'm going to sew it on first and then I'm going to um, figure out my clasp for it, okay? Um, the sewing is very straightforward. I'm going to, it'll be in my machine like this, of course, so unfortunately you wouldn't be able to see from that angle. But anyway, and then I'll just kind of bend this down a little bit and sew right along about a quarter of an inch up or so. Um, it's sticking about a half an inch in below the top of the pocket, okay? And you want to make sure you got it straight because otherwise, you know, you'll see that angle out here as well. Um, couple of ways to, to make sure you have it straight and one I one the one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my ruler right here at the tops of the pocket and then you can easily see if it's got an angle to it or if it's running straight across down there okay so underneath that line there you can you can easily see if it's if it, it, that it's running straight across um, I may just hold the ruler there while I sew it and then I can watch it the whole time and make sure it doesn't move or anything. So when I come back that'll be sewn on and we're gonna apply the clasp to the pocket. Alright so I've changed the angle of the camera a little bit. Um, the surface I'm working on is actually two separate tables and as I'm pounding on this one I'm hoping that that table won't move as much for the camera. So lots of pounding to go. All right, so here's what I do now to measure where that clasp should go, okay? I've got me a little strip of leather here um, that's one inch wide. I've got my, uh, my snap hook here. I'm going to go ahead and snap my hook on like it ought to be. Doo -doo -doo. I am going to pull my leather through it, okay? Now... I'm just going to close my flap, make sure it's squarely closed and it's, you know, I don't want to pull it so far down that it's pulling up on the bag body, but I do want it to be securely down, okay? Um, I designed this pocket specifically because I wanted a more squared looking pocket. Um, and uh, yeah, because the bag is very boxy and I, I like that, that style for this bag. So all I'm doing here though is I'm going to measure... I want the top of that clasp, about a quarter of an inch above that, is where I'm going to put my oblong punch to uh, to have it go down inside the pot in, inside the pocket flap. Okay, so I have marked that. Okay, and they, it can get tricky right here because, again, since you're not working a flat surface, um, it can be a little bit difficult. But what I'm going to do is hang it off the edge of the table here to do my hit. Um, that way the bag can, you know, be flat out there. I am going to put one of my centering rulers up there to make sure that I am exactly in the middle of this, okay? Um, I don't have that ruler on me right this second, so give me just a moment to, uh, to grab that and my mallet. All right, so um, this ended up being right at about an inch and a half from the uh, tip of the pocket there, or the tip of the flap, I guess you could say. Okay, got my centering ruler here, so I'm gonna center left to right. Center my punch on the centering ruler. Get this out of the way here. Um, here, let me bring my camera up just a little bit. I'm sorry. There we go. All right, so I apologize for being off camera there for a minute. Make sure everything's still nice and centered after I leaned across it. Pull that camera up. Okay. Everything's in position, give it a hit. Maybe two. <laughs> All right, 
So now I'm going to go ahead too and uh, go up about a uh, half an inch or so from that and center on it. And that's where I'm going to lay a rivet. So go ahead and take care of that hole while I'm at it. Okay. There we go. Now, my one inch strap that's been hanging off of here. Um, I'll take it and I'm just going to take a round punch. I mean, you can cut it, you can do whatever with it, but I'm just going to take a round punch here and um, knock the ends of it off. And then I'll put it in there and measure to where that rivet hole is going to be right quick. Okay, and I want to pull it basically securely to the uh, top of the flap, bend it back there, and then I'll put the rivet hole in it. And then before I rivet it though, I will check everything. Okay, I'm going to temporarily set my rivet down in it, put it down and buckle it, and uh, you know, make sure everything lines up good. Um, before I put that rivet on there because if you've ever drilled out one of these rivets it is not a fun chore and when I say chore I mean it <laughs> it's work <laughs> so there we have that's actually a little bit tight okay a little bit too tight I again if I can't do it with one hand I don't want it and I can't so all I have to do is make a new one of these little straps that's holding the clasp and make it just a tad longer. Okay? Not a problem. So, if this one is this long, then let's add, I don't know, three eighths of an inch. Okay, it's not super tight, it's just a little tight. Okay. Now we do need to make sure we put our rivet hole in the same place, otherwise we risk, you know, losing the, uh, the ground that we've gained there. Now we're going to try it one more again, okay? So again, we'll put it in there. Give it some room. Put our rivet through all the layers. too good on the last uh, last bit of that. I need to pull it back out and ream that hole a little bit so that I can get a dang rivet through it. I do like to use as small of a hole as I can so that it doesn't have room for play but um, you know you do also want to make sure that you can actually get the dang rivet in it especially if it's this is fairly easy to put together but if it's something that's really hard to hold all the pieces and stuff while you're doing your balancing act. There we go. All right, let's see if we work this time. Bring it down, and yeah, that'll, that'll do nicely. Okay, holds it nice and secure, but I think I can open it with one hand. There it goes. All right, so let's rivet that sucker down. Before we screw it up again. <laughs> All right, grab me a washer from a rivet, and of course I didn't bring my rivet setter over here. Anyway, y'all have all seen me uh, set a rivet, so we're gonna stop the recording for now. All right, so the very next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna put together our gusset, okay? And if you remember from the intro video, this bag has pockets in the gussets, okay, right here, and uh, the same on the other, uh, other side, sorry. Um, 
Anyway, so the very first thing I have to do is I need to take my long gusset piece, which is the, goes around the bottom and creates both the pockets on the sides, and I need to fold down the ends of it, and uh, you can tape them down if tape works on your project, and uh, and so that so that seam just like we do on pocket tops and stuff like that, because well, it's a pocket top, isn't it? Anyway, so I'm gonna fold these down. I'm gonna sew them up, and then I'll show you how we clip them around the. I'm using the back of the bag since it can still lay flat. Um, you know, it doesn't have the pocket sewn to it. Um, and we'll clip it around it to make all our measurements and everything, and, and get it just right to uh, to where it has two pockets, and then the gussets the right length too. All right, got that all sewn up. So right there, just like the regular. Every other uh, rolled seam we've done for pocket ends and stuff. All right, so what I'm going to do now that those are sewn down is I'm going to fold this thing in half and I'm going to find its center point. Okay, so I'm just folding it in half all the way out, and then I'll just this leather will mark if I crease it. Um, I don't need to use a scratch all or anything because it's going to mark really nicely. Okay, now. I also need to find the center of this. So for that, I'll use my centering ruler, okay? Do, 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 do. We are at 12 inches wide. Uh, there's my scratch hole, so my center will be six inches. Now, super easy. I just have to clip the two together with my big old bucket of magic clips. People are always like, what's in those coffee cans? Clips. Lots of clips. So, I'm going to clip those two centers together. And every couple inches, I'm going to put another clip. Alright, but we're going to do something a little bit different than what we normally do. Alright. Um, I'm going to do the side gussets before making the corners and going up the sides with this one. Okay, and all I want to do, see these side gussets still have a skived end on them. Okay, I want to put that skived end up on the top to match that skived end. All right, and I'm going to start clipping them on the way back down, like so. All right, now, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Not much, just a little. So I got my corner here. I'm going to kind of stretch my leather out a little bit so that it goes around the corner nice and nice and neat. Okay, so I'm just stretching that scived area just a little bit, not trying to rip it apart. Just a little stretch. And I'm going to um, clip it as I go around that corner there, and it'll start to stand up as I do. A lot of these clips are brand new, so the little wings aren't bent back yet like they need to be. So I'd pay an extra dollar for a hundred clips if they already had the little wings bent back. <laughs> All right, so we're going around the corner, clipping, 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 clipping. Okay. these things on and when we get to the other part we actually need it to be on the inside of this one that's what's going to form that pocket right so as I got it laid nice and straight there I'll put now three layers together and start clipping them up the side Now, that's all I need to do to make the measurements I need to make, okay? And what I'm going to look at here, and everything I'm doing on this side, I'm going to do it on this side before I unclip the whole thing. But I don't need to show you twice because here you are watching it and you don't want to get too bored having to listen to me babble. So I'm going to take my scratch all, or you can use even an ink pen, and I'm just going to make a mark where that side gusset is. 
and keep in mind this is the backs of these pieces of leather okay um, so anyway I'm gonna make a mark there and that way when I take all this apart I can put that right back on that mark I can glue it down I can whatever but I'm going to end up sewing it down um, and that will uh, that'll create the bottom of that pocket and then when I do that to both sides now I have my entire gusset piece that is going to go around um, around this bag okay so like I said that's all I need to do to that side right there is uh, that so now I'm going to start doing the other side here okay but once again I'm not going to make you watch me do it twice if you need to see it twice feel free to rewind the video a little bit okay so I pulled that off and I uh, lined that gusset back up um, Okay, and I can feel how I can even um, mark it right there but what I want to do is create me a stitch line okay um, I want to see where the bottom of this is the bottom of this piece of leather okay and it goes from right here to right here so I want my stitch line to be just above that maybe a quarter of an inch Okay, and all I'm going to do is just stitch across that, and that's what seals up the bottom part of that pocket. The sides are sealed into the seams. Okay, so I'm going to do the exact same thing on both sides. I'm going to sew those on the machine. It's just a straight across line, and that's that. Okay, when I come back, um, we're going to put the um, backpack strap holders on the, the, the back piece of this, and then we're going to start sewing this sucker together. All right, so I've got my part here that's uh, the yoke that's gonna hold the shoulder straps on, okay? And the pattern for it has these two oblong punches in it, okay? I went ahead and punched two more, a little over half an inch inside of those two for my handle. The original plan was to sew the handle to this yoke, but it's just so much easier and uh, um, to, to go ahead and, and um, punch two more holes and we'll stuff it in there and put a put a rivet on it okay so I'm gonna take this thing and I'm gonna put it an inch and a half down from the top and I'm just gonna sew all the way around the outside okay um, if you're taping it on only tape on the edges you don't want to tape down the center and stuff because you're gonna end up having to put uh, straps and stuff down in there and if that's all taped down then it's difficult to do okay the other thing I'm gonna do this is the handle real simple handle if you want a more complicated handle by all means change the pattern make another one do whatever you like um, but I wanted kind of a simple one that could be made out of the same leather as the rest of the bag so all you do with one of these is we're gonna fold these two in until they meet in the middle like this okay and then we're gonna sew down two lines uh, not directly in the center of course but offset to each side of the center to hold it down It'll make a cool looking handle and um, then when that's done then we'll stick it in here and put a rivet in it and it'll have a nice looped handle for for holding okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do those two uh, those two things right quick um, and then we're gonna rivet the handle onto it and then we're gonna sew the gusset to the bag the back of the bag that is um, and that's going to be as far as we get today. Uh, Janie's got some honeydew stuff for me to do at the house, and I need to get it done because I'm a procrastinator. I'm sure y'all can understand. <laughs> All right. So, sewed that down. Sewed that handle down, just like I said. And then uh, all I'm gonna do now is push these down in here and rivet them in just like I've done every other strap end and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and that'll have the handle on there, okay? I'm not gonna do the shoulder straps at this time because it's just easier to do them at the very, very end um, than it is to wrestle with those shoulder straps while you're, while you're trying to sew all the rest of the bag together and everything like that. So I'm going to punch a hole through each of these, put a brass rivet in them. Um, you've seen me do it a hundred times. Uh, when I come back, we're going to clip the gussets together, not forgetting the, um, 
the little triangles that are going to hold the shoulder straps and uh, we'll sew the back to it and that'll be that for the day. All right, got my handle all professionally riveted in, looking all pretty. I even picked it up by it just to make sure that, you know, it's a handle. <laughs> All right, so next thing we're gonna do is we need to take our little triangles. They're gonna hold the bottom part of our backpack straps, okay? And they have to be inserted into this seam that we're about to sew. So we don't wanna forget them, okay? So our triangle's like that. It's got one big long side, two short sides. We're gonna fold the long side in half, okay? Just like that. I'm gonna find the pair of scissors I had in my hand just 10 seconds ago. And then where that scaven stopped right there, I'm gonna just lop it off. Just flush and straight. Okay, now that piece is going to, sorry about that, go over here in this corner. Now basically, how I like to do it is, where that corner stops being round and goes back to straight, that's where I want this thing, okay? Right there. So let me get it, good, okay. Um, normally I'll put a little piece of tape to kind of hold it together. But basically you want the fat open end facing up. Okay, and you want it folded to the, the inside here. Hope that makes a little bit of sense. Let's see if I can get this tape to... It's really hard when it doesn't want to stick down, huh? I'm sure you are tired of hearing me talk about it by now. There we go. Fold that sucker up. And again, big wide end is going to be facing up in opposite corner. And I'm just going to clip it into place for now while I do the other one. Okay? So we'll follow the same procedure. I'm going to fold it in half. I'm going to clip that closed corner right there. And the only reason I'm clipping it off, guys, is just so I can get it closer to that turn. Okay, down there in the corner. Oof. That's what I get for trying to be like a left-hander for a minute. Sucker did not cut straight at all. All right. Little piece of tape. Just like that. Once again, right there where the, cor tur t t t the corner goes to straight again. Oop, I gotta answer that one, sorry folks. 